Whether they're set under the sea or out of this world, Pixar animated films transport audiences to infinity and beyond. But the core of the studio's heartfelt and award-winning stories is often friendship. From lovable monsters to romantic robots to prehistoric pals, these are the greatest friendships in Pixar history. Mike, the little green monster with one big eye, and Sully, his close buddy who is a furry blue behemoth, are dynamic scarers in 2001's Monsters, Inc. They collect scream energy to power the city of Monstropolis by popping out of bedroom closets to frighten children each night. These two friends are also roommates, with Mike coaching Sully to sharpen his scaring skills and use his best scary feet. Scary feet, scary feet, scary feet! Oh, the kids are waiting! Okay, scary feet, scary feet, scary feet, scary feet, scary feet, Kids asleep! <laughs> However, their friendship doesn't actually drive the plot of the film. Rather, it's Sully's connection with Boo, the toddler who accidentally tumbles into the monster world that changes Sully's life and the scare floor for the better. The little girl wanders through her closet door and into the monster's factory one night while Sully is working late, but she's anything but terrified. Instead, she's curious about this blue beast and instantly calls him Kitty. Sully and Mike scramble to hide her, worried they'll lose their jobs or worse, become infected with kid germs. But when the girl is afraid to sleep because of the lizard-like monster who usually scares her each night, Sully promises to watch over her so she can rest. He soon nicknames her Boo, because she's great at hiding and surprising him, kicking off an incredibly close friendship between Cutie and the Beast. And while he figures out how to guide her home, she shows him and the rest of the monster world how powerful laughter can be. Inside Out is the story of how joy and sadness become friends while coexisting inside a tween girl named Riley. During this journey, Joy realizes why sadness is so important, alongside other feelings like anger, fear, and disgust. But nothing tugs at emotions quite like a goodbye between good friends who know when it's time to move on. And that's what happens to Joy and Bing Bong, Riley's imaginary friend from childhood. Created when Riley was three, Bing Bong is a sweet concoction with a cotton candy body, a cat's tail and whiskers, and an elephant's trunk. He even claims to be part dolphin. When Joy and Sadness become lost during Riley's depression over her family's move to San Francisco, they find Bing Bong wandering among her memories. Joy thinks that he's just what Riley needs to cheer up. Even though he misses Riley, Bing Bong is wise beyond his parts. Once he, Joy, and his rocket wagon fall into the memory dump, Joy despairs, knowing that's where all memories are forgotten. But Bing Bong realizes that Riley will need Joy throughout her life, so he chooses to sacrifice himself and launch Joy to safety. He has just one heartbreaking request before fading away. Take her to the moon for me, okay? When Miguel unexpectedly travels to the land of the dead in 2017's Coco, he finds a friend in Hector. He agrees to help Miguel meet the famous musician who the boy thinks is his great-great-grandfather in exchange for taking Hector's photo back to the land of the living. This is crucial for Hector because no souls can cross the Marigold Bridge and visit their loved ones on Day of the Dead unless someone places their photo on an ofrenda. Sure, Hector is a pretty mischievous character, disguising himself as none other than Mexican artist Frida Kahlo in one of his many attempts to cross the bridge. And he looks pretty raggedy even for a skeleton. But he's a sincere soul who's just desperate. He wants to see his daughter again because he died when she was just a child, and now her memories of him are fading. It takes some help from Miguel's late extended family, the Ale Brije Papita and the dog Dante to sort out Hector's true connection to Miguel. But even before then, the two have an easygoing, playful chemistry, perfectly on display in their rousing performance of Un Poco Loco, which completely captivates a festival audience. There was never any doubt that Marlin, an overprotective clownfish, needed the support of Dory in the heartfelt film Finding Nemo. After Marlin's only child, Nemo is scooped up by a diver near the Great Barrier Reef, he nearly has a breakdown. Marlin wouldn't have been able to swim five feet, let alone all the way to Nemo's aquarium in a dentist's office in Sydney, Australia, without Dory by his side. She's outgoing enough to ask for directions, she's a patient companion, and she can speak whale. A widower who lost his wife and dozens of eggs to a barracuda, Marlin is understandably nervous, but his doom and gloom outlook threatens to get the better of him when Nemo goes missing. When he begs for help, dozens of assorted fish pass him by. Dory is the only one who stops to lend her assistance. Even though her cheerful disposition and short-term memory loss test Marlin's patience at first, she turns out to be just the right partner for such an arduous journey. 
She nudges Marlin along at every hurdle, whether it's by bouncing atop jellyfish, chatting with various undersea creatures, or flying with pelicans. As she reminds Marlin, when circumstances look rough, sometimes you've gotta just keep swimming. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Pixar's brilliant science fiction film WALL-E is a charming romance that focuses on two robots who only possess about nine words between them, but they seem to share a connection that transcends language. WALL-E is the last functioning robot on Earth. He's a stout compactor who spends his days cleaning up endless miles of trash, but he also treasures some of the artifacts he discovers, such as a spork and a Rubik's Cube. He hangs out with a cockroach that chirps like a cricket, but also seems to be achingly lonely as he watches old videos of musicals and gazes at the stars. So it's no wonder that he falls head over treads at the first sight of Eve, a sleek egg-shaped bot who can fly. Eve scans the Earth for any signs of vegetation so that all humans cruising in space can one day return to the planet. But she's cagey about her mission and takes her time warming up to Wally. Nevertheless, she eventually recognizes his thoughtfulness in sheltering her from a sandstorm, his whimsy in showing her the outdated wonders of his home, and of course his awesome dance moves. It's only after he safeguards her mission by protecting a seedling that their initial spark blooms into one of Pixar's most unique and memorable relationships. In 2007's Ratatouille, food critic Anton Ego writes something that is touching and profound. Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. The same can be said for a great friend, as Remy, a rat with refined culinary tastes, and Linguini, a clumsy kitchen assistant, learn while cooking up a storm together. Voiced by Patton Oswalt, Remy doesn't fit in with his rat colony, which loves eating whatever disgusting scraps humans throw away. Eventually, Remy winds up in the kitchen of a famous restaurant in Paris. For him, this is paradise, but nobody wants a rat around food, even one as tidy as Remy. However, when he tries to sneak out of the kitchen to save his hide, he stops to salvage a soup that the ever clumsy Linguini has ruined. He ends up creating an amazing dish, as well as earning Linguini some serious praise. The insecure young man soon realizes that this little chef can understand him and has the type of creativity in the kitchen that he can only dream of. The two friends eventually discover how to cook together, with Remy hiding under Linguini's chef hat and tugging on his hair. But once they truly learn to trust each other, this method proves unnecessary, and they figure out a way to let each of their talents shine. While Remy and Linguini struggle through some sour moments, it's nothing that a good talk and a delicious meal can't solve. Russell, an enthusiastic young wilderness explorer, and Carl, an elderly man tied to his house in more ways than one, are probably the most unlikely pair of Pixar friends. In fact, the animators even designed this duo from 2009's Up with opposite shapes in mind. Russell is rounded like a top because he's an energetic dervish, while the widowed Carl is so set in his ways that his face, body, and eyeglasses resemble sturdy squares. The two strangers end up on a thrilling journey together after the isolated man comes up with a whimsical plan to avoid being sent to a retirement home. Instead, he sets off for Paradise Falls, a South American waterfall that his late wife always wanted to see. Of course, what makes this trip so extraordinary is that he's traveling in his house, which is attached to thousands of helium balloons. Russell, who is eager to earn a badge for assisting the elderly, happens to be on the porch when the building takes flight. It takes a while for them to really get along. Carl is pretty cranky, after all, but this odd couple ends up perfectly balancing one another. They even discover that something as simple as sharing ice cream can be an adventure if you're with someone you care about. And honestly, it's impossible to not get choked up during the scene where Carl shows up for Russell's Wilderness Explorer ceremony to award the boy an honor in his late wife's name. Released in 2015, The Good Dinosaur takes place in an alternate past where the asteroid thought to have destroyed the dinosaurs just barely misses Earth. So instead, dinosaurs and humans end up sharing the Earth together at the same time. It's in this prehistoric setting that a very unusual friendship forms. Arlo, a young Apatosaurus who comes from a family of farmers, runs across a feral child who is lost and far from home. Arlo initially fights with the boy for eating his family's corn, but eventually grows close to him and names him Spot. Despite Arlo's tendency to be afraid, he even tries to protect the boy, or at least make sure that he doesn't get eaten. Spot, on the other hand, is fearless. He grabs lizards, snakes, and occasionally bites the heads off of giant bugs. Still, he seems to be glad that someone bigger has his back. 
The boy teaches Arlo how to howl, snuggles against him when he sleeps, and scampers up his neck to ride on the dinosaur's head. Meanwhile, Arlo twirls his tail in the grass to enchant the boy with fireflies. He also matures enough through the film to realize when to leave Spot in caring human hands. Their friendship may not have lasted very long, but memories of their moments together definitely will. Oh, look, look! Gives me little gooses every time! I love that story! Perhaps the greatest Pixar friendship of all time launched the animation studio's empire with a simple but relatable narrative. Toy Story is the tale of a cloth cowboy who isn't the top toy in a boy's life anymore after a confident space ranger arrives with flashing lights and fancy sound effects. The voice talents of Tom Hanks and Tim Allen infuse Woody and Buzz with tons of personality. In fact, the character's evolving friendship has kept audiences enthralled for more than 20 years. However, the two toys had a rocky start when a jealous Woody accidentally causes Buzz to fall from a bedroom window, and that wasn't the last time that they had a disagreement. Luckily, their bond has survived many challenges, including nearly being blown to bits, a madcap chase around an airport, an extremely dicey daycare center, and a very close call with a blazing incinerator at a garbage dump. Whatever their ups and downs may be, they always figure out how to soar. Woody and Buzz have plenty of their own insecurities, wondering what lies ahead for them. But they know how to encourage each other when it's needed, whether they're discussing how noble it is to be a child's toy or letting a pal know that it's okay to follow his heart for a change. Like the best human friends, Buzz and Woody might travel to unexpected places or find themselves with different families, but no matter what, they can always count on one thing. When it all ends, I'll have old Buzz Lightyear to keep me company. For infinity and beyond. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite films are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.